Hi, my name is Mike Scott, Industrial Product Manager at the Modal Shop. In today's video, I'm going to use our Model 9210 Low Frequency Portable Vibration Calibrator to perform a frequency sweep calibration on the Bentley Nevada Model 190501 Velometer CT Vibration Transducer. This sensor is 100 millivolts per inch per second with a plus or minus 5% tolerance at 100 hertz. The output is about 4 millivolts per millimeters per second in metric scale. The frequency range is 3 hertz to 900 hertz with, with a plus or minus 1 dB tolerance, which works out to about 12%. The frequency range is 1.5 hertz to 1000 hertz with a plus or minus 3 dB tolerance, which works out to about 42% high and 37% low. So it's a very wide tolerance at the extreme edges of this sensor's frequency range. To do the test, I'll need a 480 CO2 signal conditioner from PCB Piezotronics, a two pin mill to BNC cable, a BNC to BNC cable, and I'll want to check the mounting adapter on the bottom of my transducer. My transducer has a quarter 28 mounting stud, which makes it easy to mount to the shaker, but there are about 24 different mounting options with this transducer. As long as the stud is not Loctited into the bottom, we don't have to worry about it. We have a 3 8 24 to quarter 28 mounting stud. But if the stud is Loctited into the bottom of the transducer, we'll want to get the appropriate female mounting adapter for the vibration shaker table. And remember, not everyone wants to create a CalCert. The vibration shaker table is capable of performing a loop check, and it's part of our rental pool for temporary outages. Let's start the test. The first step is to mount the model 190501 into the mounting port on the shaker. It's a quarter 28 mounting port. So we just screw the sensor into place and then when we torque the sensor down, we want to press down slightly so it aligns with the stopper uh, that is a shaker lock that prevents shaker damage when mounting the transducer and tighten it with a crescent wrench. The next step is to secure the two pin mill connector and the other side of the cable, the BNC connection, can be plugged into the 480CO2 sensor input. We take the output of the 480CO2 and connect the other side of the BNC cable and power on. Next step is to connect the uh, output of the 480CO2 to the model 9210D portable vibration calibrators test sensor input. For brevity, I'll just show the final test points of our sweep, starting at 600 cycles per minute, one inch per second. The output of the 190501 is 102 millivolts per inch per second, and that passes calibration. Moving on to 300 cycles per minute, one inch per second, the output is 99 millivolts per inch per second, which is within tolerance, so that also passes calibration. We're starting to see the roll off at 180 cycles per minute at one inch per second. Our output is 92 millivolts per inch per second, and that also passes calibration. At 120 cycles per minute, we need to wait longer for the shaker to settle on the target amplitude of one inch per second. The target amplitude is the smaller number at the bottom of the screen. The actual amplitude is the larger number located directly above as measured by the device's reference accelerometer. At 120 cycles per minute, we're gonna find that the output of our sensor under test is 84 millivolts per inch per second, which still passes calibration. The last test point of 60 cycles per minute is below the sensor's maximum low frequency range. Now that we have exported the calibration data to the supplied USB flash memory drive to create the calibration certificate, we open the drive and open the Microsoft Excel macro enabled template called PVC Report Generation Workbook. This is supplied with every portable vibration calibrator model 9210 and 9110D. Um, so calibration reports can be created on any computer with Microsoft Excel. There is no need to download any software. So we open up the Microsoft Excel macro enabled workbook and click import data from file. And next we choose uh, the USB disk here. And we're going to grab the raw data file that we exported from the calibrator on November 26th at about 5.48 in the afternoon or 
And here's our record for the Benton Nevada 190501. That imports into this raw data table, but this is not the certificate. To view the certificate, we click this button, and you can see our frequency response sweep deviation plot all the way down to 60 cycles per minute. And you see quite a bit of roll off, which I'll talk about in just a second. But to uh, review this sheet, um, we can enter the serial number here. 12345 is not the actual serial number. We can, of course, note the manufacturer. We can even put a description here for volometer CT. All of these cells are, um, you, are adjustable in the sheet. So you can type anything that you would like. You can see that the sensitivity at the reference frequency of 6,000 cycles per minute is 98.11. You can see that our test level at that point was one inch per second peak. If I scroll down, you see our deviation plot. And the deviation plot comes from the data here in the table. You can see that uh, we were within specification at every data point. Uh, remember that the specification at 120 cycles per minute is plus or minus 3 dB, so that allows us to be 37% down when you convert that to percentage. So only being 14% down is certainly well within specification. Also remember that the, the sensor is only specified to 90 cycles per minute. I tested it at 60 cycles per minute just to illustrate the fact that it does have a very steep roll off that you see here. So it's very important to understand the output of this sensor if you're using it at 90 cycles per minute or on a 120 cycle per minute slow speed fan. Very important to understand uh, the voltage in millivolts per inch per second or millivolts per millimeter per second that the sensor is outputting. Calibration certificate uh, comes with our NIST traceability and PTB traceability project numbers. Uh, it also references the ISO standard that we're following for piezoelectric vibration sensor calibration and the model and serial number are of course noted. Uh, we can type anything that we would like in the user notes like uh, for example sensor only specified to 90 CPM would be a good note. Uh, we could type anything we'd like as a customer as found and as left. I, if it passes I usually go within tolerance for each one of these fields and of course we want to put our name down as the technician. The date and time is shown here. All of these cells can be changed with the exception of the raw data cells. As I click here in the data table I cannot manipulate these cells. And that's the calibration certificate. We can create a PDF file or save it to the network, print it, anything we would like to do at this point. As you can see from my calibration, it's important to know the output of the sensor at low frequencies. For example, my sensor was only 80 millivolts per inch per second at 120 cycles per minute. So if I was using it in a very slow speed application, like a 120 CPM fan, it's important to know that the output is significantly less than the nominal sensitivity. For more information on how to program the 9210 Portable Vibration Calibrator, you can consult our Video Vault for pro programming a test with CalRoute Video. Also in our Video Vault, we have a special video for API 670 compliance testing that shows you how to perform a loop check using our Vibe Alarm. And remember, all of our vibration shaker tables and vibration calibrators are available in our, in our rental program. Thanks for watching.